What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH, um, where the fuck do I start? Uh, <laughs> um, Jordan, let me tell you something. I applaud Jordan. I do. I I applaud her because you know what? It's about time she stood up for herself when it came to Aunt Stella. It's about fucking time. Because you know what? Jordan has been so nice to this lady since she came to town. Ever since Stella came to town, Jordan's been nice. She's been courteous to her. All Aunt Stella has been to Jordan was a total witch. I'm just saying. Snide remarks, snarky comments, then you're calling Curtis's ex and stuff, trying to get her to get into their business and stuff. Like, no. That was that was the final straw for Jordan. That was the final straw. I don't blame her. You know what? Curtis, in my opinion, needs to grow a backbone when it comes to his aunt. Let me tell you something. I understand he doesn't want to disrespect his aunt, and I get that. Trust me, I do. But you need to stop letting this woman run your life. You know what I mean? Like, stop. Stop trying to accommodate her and put her in her place. That's what he needs to do. And it's a shame Jordan has to do that. You know what I mean? If I, I, I totally understand why Jordan don't want her at the wedding. Let me tell you something. Why would you want negativity at your wedding? Who would want that? Your wedding is supposed to be the most beautiful time in your life. You know what I'm saying? It's your day. Your perfect day. You know? Why would you want someone negative and rude and, and just someone who does not genuinely wish you well? Why would you want that type of person at your wedding? And that's what Curtis needs to tell his aunt. If she can't genuinely be happy for them and be nice, why come to their wedding? Don't come to their wedding. You know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't want somebody there who genuinely does not wish me well. Why would I want you at my wedding? You don't wish me well. You're not happy for me. Why would I want you there? Who wants negativity at their wedding? Negativity, really. Who wants that on their wedding day? Like, that, you don't want to, years from now, think back on your wedding and be like, oh, we had this negative person there. And, you know, you, you don't want to think of bad things at your wedding. Your wedding is supposed to be all about you and the, the groom or the bride. It's supposed to be about the two of y'all. That's what it's supposed to be about. You know, uniting as one, love, happiness, and all that other shit. That's what it's about. Why would I want a negative ass person at my wedding who don't wish me well, who don't want to see me happy? No, I don't want you at my wedding. And she looked like she took offense to the fact that they didn't want her at the wedding. I was like, how? Why are you shocked that Jordan doesn't want you at her wedding? You're rude. You're negative. You're totally dismissive of her. You try to get your nephew's ex to come to town or whatever just to ruin their wedding. And apparently the ex got a job in Port Charles. I say, yep, their, their, their relationship is about to be tested. Not only by Aunt Stella, but apparently Chandra's coming to Port Charles because she got a job there. I said, this is about to be some whole fuckery that's about to go on. I said, I don't even see them getting married at this point. <laughs> I just don't see it. It's like, it's just too much drama. Like, and I'm pretty sure Jordan looked like she already at her breaking point. As much as she loved Curtis, I wouldn't blame her if she decided not to go through with the wedding. I wouldn't blame her because it's like she's trying to be nice. She's trying to be accommodating, but she's reached her limit. And Curtis is not helping the situation because he's not putting his aunt in her place. He's not telling her to back the fuck off. It's like you're not trying hard enough. You know what I mean? To get this woman to understand that you're an adult, you're going to live your life. He's not trying hard enough. So it's like, why would you want to go through with that wedding? He needs to grow a backbone and let her know. Like, this is who I'm marrying. This is who I'm in love with. Get with it or get lost. Simple. I mean, you ain't got to be so harsh like that when you tell her, but it's like you need to say it in some, you know, some similar words. I'm just saying, like, for her to understand, because this is getting ridiculous. Um. So anyway, I did actually like see this is what I'm talking about. I can't stand on Stella when she's around Jordan, but it's like she's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know what I mean? She's Mr. You know, she is it's ridiculous. 
she's so sweet and nice with everybody else, but so nasty and rude when it comes to Jordan. But when she was with Michael, I actually liked that scene because she was so positive. She was, you know, comforting. Um, she was just sweet. You know what I mean? Just so sweet. You know, the way she was giving him pamphlets to learn how to deal with his grief. To maybe he need to talk with someone. Um, and I love that scene. You know what I mean? That was a deep scene and I like it. But the deepest scene that I liked, though, was him with Christina. Because I felt like everybody that he spoke with, the person he was willing and, and able to open up to the most was Christina. And I feel like he was more able to open up to her because, as we all know, him and Christina used to be real close. You know what I'm saying? And they, you know, she she hasn't been in town as much. So it's easier for him to talk to her because she doesn't fully know the, uh, the situation. She only know what people been telling her. So it's easier for him to open up to Christina than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? I love that scene. How, you know, I just hate how Michael just blames himself for it because I agree with Christina. The accident did not is not the reason the baby died. The accident had nothing to do with it. Michael is not responsible for that. You know what I'm saying? I understand he wants to blame himself, but he shouldn't. You know, he really shouldn't blame himself. And it's just sad to see him like that. So, you know, I hope soon he gets his actual baby back soon. I hope, you know, one can pray and hope that they don't drag this out till 2029. <laughs> Shit, the baby will be on his way to college by then. Um, Probably married with 10 kids. But um, I did. I enjoyed that scene. I also enjoyed the scene with Sam and Christina where, you know, Sam was just letting her know what was going down with her and Jason and Drew. But we did get more insight into kind of why Christina's in Port Charles and what's been going on with her in Oregon. Basically, you know, she has this. How do I put it? She's trying to figure out her career because, like she said, Parker is a professor. She has this whole life. And Christina's thinking, like, what the fuck do I have? You know what I'm saying? She she feels like she's not on Parker's level career wise when it comes down to money, career. She's not on her level. I feel like career wise, money wise, she's not on her level and intellectually she's not on her level. I'm just saying I'm not saying Christina's dumb, but it's like, what do her and Parker have in common? Like, what do they talk about? You know, not saying Christina's stupid, but it's like Christina, I feel like doesn't know enough about the world to have an intellectual conversation with a professor who clearly is older. Not saying she old, but she's older and she has lived. You know what I'm saying? This woman has lived. Christina has yet to live. She's still young. You know what I'm saying? She still has a lot of growing up to do, a lot of maturing to do. She has a lot of traveling in her that she needs to do, you know, to see the world, understand the world. You know what I'm saying? Before she can really be with a mature person, you know, who's older. You know what I mean? So I feel like she needs to take a step back from that, find herself and figure, you know, she really needs to just sit down and, and brainstorm about what she wants to do for a career. You know, get a pen and, and, and paper, old school, because, you know, some people run to a pad, an iPad or whatever and start jotting stuff down. I think she should old school it, get a pen and a pad. And write down some careers and research them and see if it's right for her or maybe see if there's a training course she could take something. You know what I'm saying? Just brainstorm. Pick. Pick. That's all you got to do. If you want a career, pick. That's It's simple. Just pick. I know when people say, what do you mean by pick? I, I mean, just pick. Think about brainstorm. See what you want to do. I mean, shit. If, do you want to be a cop? Do you want to be a firefighter? You want to be a paramedic? Pick. And then you do your research on how you become that. Then you take the necessary steps to become it. Work hard and, and you'll get there. You know what I'm saying? Like, just pick. It's simple. When it comes down to career, pick. It's all you got to do. Well, it's not really all you got to do, but you know what I mean? Like, it's. I mean, I know it sounds easier said than done, but trust me, get a pen, get a pad, write that shit down. Figure it out. You know what I mean? And, and and like I said yesterday, she's in her 20s. I'm in my 20s. You know what I mean? So I definitely, let me tell you something. I definitely understand where Christine is coming from. I can totally relate to her when it comes to career. I'm 25. When I was 20, I was doing the same shit. At 25, I'm still kind of thinking what I want to do. You know, I don't really know career-wise what I want to do. 
I have a lot of things running through my mind, like, you know, because even when I was a kid, I thought about being a cop for like five seconds and I changed my mind. I always thought about being a lawyer, a businessman, you know what I mean? But I'm leaning more towards businessman, you know, entrepreneur, because I feel like that's more me. You know, I like a career where I be the boss, you know, I set my own hours, just do what I want to do. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's just pick, you know, you'll feel it. Trust me, you will find out what you want to do when you figure it out. Trust me, you will know that's what you really want to do. Trust me. So I definitely can relate to Christina on that. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, Carly and Jocelyn was another scene that I thoroughly enjoyed today. I felt like Carly handled that shit like a pro. Carly definitely handled it. You know what I mean? She sat down with Jocelyn. They talked, they cried, they laughed. They got down to the root of why she was stealing. And I love the punishment that she gave her. It was a fair, it was a fair punishment. She basically told Jocelyn, we're going to take the clothes back to the store. You're going to officially apologize to the owner. Carly's going to reimburse them for every item she stole. And Jocelyn's going to pay Carly the money back. And if the money is not enough from Lila's kids from her camp counseling job, she's going to bust tables at the Metro Court until it's paid back in full. I like that punishment. I love how Carly and Elizabeth are stepping up as parents. I fucking love it. Um, and I even love, you know, surprisingly, we actually saw Terry today. I, you know, a lot of people was asking me in the comments, like what happened to Elizabeth's friend and stuff like that? Well, we got to see her again today. Um, and I love that Elizabeth acknowledged the fact that she never really paid too much attention to Cameron as far as, you know, she paid more attention to the other kids than she did Cameron. And she explained why she did that. And it was totally understandable why she did, because Cameron was the child she never worried about. You know what I'm saying? Cameron did his chores. He was good in school. He did his homework, everything without her having to nag him about doing it. The other kids needed her attention, especially Jake, because, you know, Jake went through hell with the whole Helena and Cassadine Island fiasco. So he needed her attention. Aiden is younger, so, you know, he's running around the house, getting into all type of stuff, making messes, so he needed her attention. Cameron was the child she felt needed her attention the least. That's why she didn't spend enough attention, you know, spend enough time with him. And now she figures that, you know what, she made a mistake. She still should have spent equal time with all three of her kids. And I'm glad she realized that. You know what I'm saying? See, this is what I'm talking about. I love seeing growth with these characters. I love it. Um, they're taking stock in themselves. You know, they're, they're, they're looking themselves in a the mirror. They're, they're figuring it out. Like, this is what I did wrong. This is how I'm going to fix it. And I'm going to do it differently. I said, thank you, God. This was the episode to watch right here. I'm going to tell you that right now. We seen some character growth and we, we also seen some bullshit and I'm about to get to the bullshit right now. You know, I am D.A. Dawson. Now, I know I said I like D.A. Dawson, but this bitch is getting on my nerves. <laughs> she is. She's getting on my damn nerves because she's like a dog with a bone. Like she went into Charlie's pub. As soon as she heard Julian mention the name Sonny Corinthos, she was foaming at the mouth, wanting to know any information. I was like, girl, get your life like. She she's not acting like a typical D.A. Like I've never seen no D.A. act like this. And what was so funny was Kim felt like she knew Margot from somewhere. I said, uh oh, because when Kim said you look familiar, I said, oh, shit, <laughs> she know her from back in the day, somewhere back in the day. She know her and I'm pretty sure it's going to come back to her and not in a good way. Um, D.A. Dawson tried to play that shit off, told my, oh, I might have one of those faces. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Um. So D.A. Dawson was basically trying to pump Julian or whatever. She trying to egg Julian on to piss Sonny off or whatever so she could lock him up. Even Julian noticed that. Julian was like, nope, I ain't falling for that bullshit. And even Sam and Jason noticed that D.A. Dawson got something personal against Sonny. And my feeling is, is that I feel like it's something from the past. And I read some of y'all comments and I remember somebody brought this up. 
the body that Sonny buried all those years ago, could that guy have been Margot's father or something or uncle, you know, a relative, something? I feel like Sonny did something maybe to a relative of hers or maybe her dad a long time ago because Sonny's been in the business a long time. He killed a lot of people. He had a lot of people killed. Any one of his victims or enemies could have been related to Margot. You know what I'm saying? So this definitely feels personal on her part because no DA has ever gone after Sonny like this. It's definitely personal. But I do have a feeling Julian might play a part in this because once he finds out that Sonny and Jason basically got the contractors to jack up their bid price and stuff and Julian can't afford it no more for his expansion of Charlie's Pub, I think Julian's going to want to retaliate against them because they're fucking up his business now. All Julian is doing is minding his business, trying to expand his business, and y'all fucking with him. So I, I wouldn't blame Julian at this point if he wanted revenge. I kind of wouldn't blame him because all he's trying to do is live his best life and y'all fucking with him for no reason. Well, there is a reason, but he don't really know what it is. Um, Hopefully he do find that body. Hopefully. Um, I understand, like I said, and I said this a million times. I totally understand Sam's anger towards Julian, but it's starting to get a little annoying at this point. Don't get me wrong. I get why she's pissed at him. Like, I get it. But at some point, it's like, damn, you can't even be cordial or nothing. Like, hey, how you doing? You ain't got to be all friendly with him or nothing. You know what I mean? But damn, like, he is still your dad. Like, you know, I understand he didn't raise her, but it's like, damn, you know, he's trying to make amends. He's apologizing. He's staying on the straight and narrow. He's trying to right his wrongs. Can he get some damn credit? I'm just saying, like, it would be nice. Um, this whole episode though, I, I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed this shit. Like this episode was pretty cool. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode and I will see y'all all later. Have a great day. Peace.